mutation. That's correct. Of the, of and that. I would ask anybody that knows of a red Sierra with um, a registration similar to this to give us a ring tonight. Now the really strange thing about all this is that you you think you've seen that car during the reconstruction. Um, the I reconstruction saw, for crime watch. Yeah, I, I believe I saw the vehicle that was involved, uh, but unfortunately it was still too late by the time I'd seen it, and uh, we still haven't been able to trace it to this day. It just it went straight past and you happened to catch it out of the corner of your eye. That's correct. Now what do we know about the men that were in the car? The, the man we've got the best description of um, is the man with the gun. Um, he's described as in his 20s of an average build, but he's got very, two very distinctive features. The first one, he's got cut, what's called cane row hair, which is tightly plaited hair down to his shoulders. And secondly, he's also got what's described as a burn scar, which uh, takes over the top of his thumb and the side of it. So two very distinctive features there. Now we heard in the, in the film he was kind of veering between an East London accent and a kind of patois, so that's something that stands out about him. And there was this phone call as well. Yeah, very strange. Um, and we would ask tonight that the person who received that call comes forward, um, receiving a call at 20 to 10 from someone saying that they've kidnapped a boy. The, the person receiving it may have thought it was a joke. And if, if he's done it on the phone, there's a good possibility he may have boasted to some friends as well. Well, let's see what we can do. It's so terrifying for that boy that when he ran away, he hid in a wee bin for a quarter of an hour before he dared come out. Let's see what we can do to help him. Call 0500 600 600 or 020 8217 5321. Credit card fraud costs almost a quarter of a billion pounds a year. Now, believe me, those costs get passed on to us. Maybe catching these people could help reduce that figure. First, this man had such a problem with timekeeping that in one day he bought three watches. Unfortunately, he wasn't using his own credit card. We're calling this the blue shirt man for obvious reasons, but maybe someone will tell us who he really is. Another snappy dresser, the purple shirt man. He's a bit partial to uh, classy jewellery, so as long as he doesn't have to pay for it himself, of course. And finally, face number four, touting a cloned American Express card. Maybe they've all got innocent explanations for using other people's cards. If so, we'd love to hear them. 0500 600 600. And all the local incident room numbers are on CFAX, page 621. We're looking for Hussein Oscara, who's responsible for the death of two men. He used to work in kebab shops in Cheshire, but a year ago he drove straight over a crossroads, smashing another car and colliding with two cyclists. Roger Harris and Brian Keneally have been friends for 20 years, and their widows describe their loss. The police informed me that Roger had been killed. I can remember feeling sick, and then I felt my legs going. He was a very jolly person, particularly when it came to being outdoors. He just loved the outdoors. I just expected that, um, in the end, um, that some sort of justice would be done. Hussein Osgara was found guilty of causing their deaths by dangerous driving, but sentencing was delayed and he disappeared. It was just complete and utter shock. I just couldn't believe it. He's the same age as my son, and I think that at this point in time, I, I think that somebody should say to him, just stop running, because somewhere along the line, he's got to start running and he's got to start taking responsibility. Hussein Ascara, we're saying to you tonight, stop running and give yourself up. 0500 600 600 or 01244 613 067. Coming up, who do you know with a scar on his belly like this? Keep watching because you'll find you want to know him and name him when you hear what he's done. We're trying to track down a million pounds worth of jewellery. Does any of this look familiar? A pearl and diamond choker necklace, a square-shaped Cartier watch, an ornate gold necklace, a pair of emerald and diamond earrings? We'll tell you why in a moment. Now, this might sound an odd question, but have you ever been interviewed about a murder? More specifically, one that happened back in 1982. On a summer's day, just off the Finchley Road in Swiss Cottage in London, a 17-year-old was murdered, killed in her own home. It caused a sensation at the time, and many people locally will still remember the victim's name, Janula Yani. The murder was never solved, but now, with new forensic evidence, tonight, it just might be. 
Janula had just left school and was waiting for her exam results. She and her mother used to take lunch to her father, who ran the local cobbler's shop. They were Greek Cypriots, a close family, but fairly strict, and Janula rarely went out on her own. Instead, life revolved around the family home in Belsize Road, and this is Janula dancing with the family 18 years ago. Only once was there any hint of trouble, one evening when they'd gone out for a walk. We were followed once by mm. this, from what I remember, of a Mediterranean-looking fellow. We were out for a walk with my mum, and we noticed him following us from Finchley Road. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, that's really good. Ade, ade, Ella. Ella. Maria, I think he fancies you. How do you know? <laughs> Maybe he likes your mother. Oh, I think he's very good. Do you think he can come back next week and oh, get Oh, darling, it? I think he's too expensive. Oh, but it really... Oh, yeah. oh here he is again. He just waved. What a weirdo. Stop it. Oh, no, 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 no. Look, he's here again. No, come on, girls. We go. We go, go. We go home. Mum, what are you scared of? There's three of us. No, I don't like it. No, come on. We go home now. August 18 years ago and this is how he may have aged maybe there was an innocent reason for his interest in the family or maybe not who is he the day Yanula died was actually a Friday the 13th she just gone to my dad's shop to take him some lunch meals on wheels for Mr. Yanni Ooh, <laughs> so much work okay. you are, oh, why you don't close the shop and finish what you're doing Janula, you go and put the dinner on in the oven, OK, darling? I stay here and help your daddy. He needs me. OK. See you later, Dad. And that's the last they saw of her, because then she just literally walked out the shop, round the corner, back to our house, which was probably not more than four or five minute walk. Later that Friday lunchtime, a neighbour saw a man turn into her own front path. Then, as he realised his mistake, he went next door to the Yanis. The family always answered the bell by looking to see who was there. Hello. So if Yanula let the visitor in, there's a big chance she knew him. She certainly seemed to like him. A local man who'd always rather fancied Yanula from afar saw Yanula smiling at the visitor. He remembers it clearly because he wished she'd been smiling at him. It wasn't more than 20 minutes later when the parents came back to the house. They called her, they said we're home, and there was no answer. Mum went upstairs into the bedroom, that's where she found her on the bed. I remember her saying that she'd picked her up and she was crying and her head just, just dropped. I don't think it's true what they say, that time is, is a great healer, because for me, it's literally like we're way back there 18 years ago, day one. Hello? I'd never seen my parents like that. I mean, my father, who was, was very strong, it, it killed him off, it finished him. As a parent myself of, of two girls, I sometimes wonder how on earth I would be able to, to deal with something like that and, and, and for, for a child of mine to die in such a way. I mean, she did die a horrific death. Yanula had struggled with her attacker, had tried to run upstairs, but had been caught and raped and strangled. To catch him, though, would, would I think, bring a peace because it's finished. There's, there's something there that hasn't finished, and hopefully we'll get him this time, and then we can close the chapter. 
So, David, your appeal is very simple. Anyone who was interviewed by police 18 years ago on this? Yes, any person who either spoke to police or gave fingerprints for elimination purposes. And that would include people from Quinton Kinston School, uh, the local Greek dance class, 